the earliest Star Wars games to be released weren't all that remarkable. That's not to say there weren't standout and even good Star Wars games in the early days, but this was rarely the case, as due to obvious limitations of the time in terms of video game hardware, devs weren't able to truly embrace their full potential when designing Star Wars licensed games. This is where the 2000s comes into play. The 2000s were arguably the most productive and meaningful years for Star Wars video games as a whole. The amount of nostalgia within that time period is truly glorious, and it's baffling to think how many great Star Wars games were released back then. Classics like Lego Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic, Jedi Academy 1 and 2, Republic Commando, Bounty Hunter, Force Unleashed, just banger after banger. This era was so incredible, it still has not been matched, even today. Although the 2000s did give us some amazing Star Wars games, it's really uncomparable when you realise that games like Star Wars Connect were made during the 2010s. <laughs> Many of you may have just noticed that I have not included one of the most prominent Star Wars IPs, and don't worry, that was intentional. For me, the Star Wars property is without a doubt the best of the best when it comes to Star Wars video games. Star Wars Battlefront 2, a great Star Wars game back then, and still a great game today. I have always held the second Battlefront close to my heart, as it was a game I grew up with in my early childhood. Memories of coming home from school, booting up the PlayStation 2, and playing that game for hours at a time. People are often blinded by nostalgia with games they played years ago hoping to rekindle the same joy the game brought them when they were younger, only to be disappointed. We've all been there, played a game we thought was class, only to realise it was total garbage. However, I know it's not just nostalgia tricking my brain. Battlefront 2 is objectively a great game. It's a 10 out of 10. It was the first game to truly put the wars in Star Wars. Huge scale combat, decent story, and immersive sound design and graphics for the time. This was the perfect Star Wars game for anyone who wanted to live out some of the most iconic battles of the film franchise. Pandemic Studios perfectly captured the intensity and excitement fans of Star Wars had been craving in a video game for so long. While the first one did do this to a degree, Battlefront 2 smashed it out of the park with numerous improvements it brought to the table, with one of the most crucial ones being playable heroes and villains. What a feature. Very few games remain timeless and this game is one of those rare examples. This was the Star Wars game to play and still is. With the success this sequel garnered, it's safe to assume that there was going to be a Battlefront 3 made, right? Well, me and all of you watching the video now know that that wasn't the case. Arguably one of the biggest tragedies to come out of the video game industry, Battlefront 3 was cancelled. It's not 100% clear as to why the game was cancelled. Some sources suggest that the game was never finished because Free Radical could not meet the 2010 deadline. It was a fan's worst nightmare, having been told that a new Battlefront game was in the works, only for that excitement to be crushed under a huge load of disappointment. For all we know, that may have been the greatest Star Wars game to ever live, and leaked footage and concept art of aspects of the game kind of support this idea. Seeing everything that got leaked makes it hurt that much more, as this would have been a truly special video game. Great stories can be found everywhere in Star Wars. The narratives of the films, novels, comics, and video games are incredibly important to the audience when it comes to this universe. Yeah, people can say they watch Star Wars for the action, and although that is fair for some of the films, as that's about all they've got going for them, telling a great story overshadows this in comparison. Storytelling in Star Wars video games ranges vastly. Some aim to retell the events of the films, like Lego Star Wars and the Revenge of the Sith video game. However, games that revolve around a story that is new have to make the narrative as interesting as possible for the player, as they don't have the already established building blocks to help them. I know a lot of people mainly look for fun gameplay rather than a deep story, but I enjoy a healthy balance. The narrative of Battlefront 2 was nothing amazing, but it was still enjoyable and interesting, as for the first time we were given insight into the mind of a clone trooper who served in the 501st and showed their thoughts and feelings towards the Jedi, and eventually the rise of the Empire. Keep in mind, this came out in 
2005, way before the Clone Wars animated series created by Dave Filoni, so clones had yet to be fully explored emotionally. I know the 2003 animated series of Clone Wars was already out, but that didn't give us much in terms of deep clone development, no matter how badass Fordo was. With Star Wars Battlefront 3, it seemed like Free Radical really wanted to be a trendsetter when it came to Star Wars narratives. It seems originally the game was going to tell two different stories. I'm not sure if they were going to use both, or maybe they'd rather just choose one over the other which is more likely, as only one of them has rendered, albeit unfinished, cutscenes, and the other is only represented in concept art and storyboards. The most popular narrative of the two, that most people are aware of, is the one that is shown through the leaked cutscenes of the game. This narrative revolves around two clones of a Jedi named X-1 and X-2, fighting for the Republic in the clone army. These two brothers were two sides of the same coin. X-1 is a fierce, hot-headed leader who focused on getting the job done, no matter the cost whereas X2 was more compassionate and level-headed, choosing to question things that he didn't think were right. Very weird already, as the story focused on two clones, who aren't Jango clones, but rather clones of a Jedi. Pretty interesting. Throughout the game you would play as X2, and the story would show the polarising paths the two brothers would take. X2 went from fighting in the clone army to becoming a Jedi, fighting against the people he once called his allies, whereas X1 would go down a much darker path, fighting for the Empire, eventually becoming a dark side force. User. This idea of a clone becoming a Jedi makes me think of Kyle Katarn, a stormtrooper turned Jedi from Legends. Fortunately, this narrative was not completely lost however, as most of the same story was adapted for the PSP spin-off Battlefront Elite Squadron, but this is still a shame as not many people have played the spin-off, so are still unaware of this fascinating story, and graphically it's not as intriguing as it could have been if it was finished for consoles and used in Battlefront 3. Now let's talk about possibly the most interesting Star Wars story that could have been. Watching the characters and events of Star Wars, have you ever wondered what could have been if a character made a different decision, chosen a different path? Well, this game was originally going to have a crack at this cool concept, and had scenarios and characters from the first six films changed drastically, showing things like Dark Side Obi-Wan, Jedi Knight Maul, and arguably the coolest one being Redeemed Vader. This hands down would have been one of the best told stories in Star Wars history, but alas, it was not meant to be. Since then, we've got comics that have explored specific moments in the Star Wars universe and changed them up, like what if Leia became Darth Vader's apprentice and what if Luke died on Hoth, but they never reached the levels this excellent idea would have dared to tackle. Maybe one day we will get a chance to see these scenarios play out. With the excitement of the new animated Marvel show What If, maybe this will show Disney that fans would love a Star Wars version. The possibilities for great stories would be endless. As briefly mentioned before, Star Wars Battlefront 2 took the torch from its predecessor and further improved the idea of large-scale combat with a multitude of improvements. As well as being able to play as heroes and villains, the game had maps much larger than those found in the original Battlefront, giving a sense of immersion and large-scale war. Watching two massive armies clash on these battlefields is both exciting and mind-blowing for the simple fact that these devs were able to accomplish this all the way back in 2005. The sequel also made many more battlefields available to the player, allowing for even more variety. Battlefront 2 continued the class-based system the original had, however expanded upon it significantly, adding an extra class and greatly expanding the arsenal of each class with various gadgets. From what we can piece together, Battlefront 3 was probably going to reuse the class system and continue to improve it. Several small clips show units wielding rocket launchers, suggesting that classes like the Demolition class would be present in the game. The most major change from 1 to 2 was the inclusion of Starfighter combat. Now, I'm not a huge fan of flying in video games, however, the way it was executed in Battlefront 2 was fantastic. Players could manually get into Starfighters and could fly around a large open space fighting enemy Starfighters and also being able to board enemy flagships and destroy them from within, blending both flying combat and regular third slash first person shooting together. The game brought countless maps, countless game modes and countless improvements, cementing itself as not only one of the best Star Wars games to ever be 
released, but one of the best games of all time. With the few details we have about Battlefront 3, the game seemed to once again raise the bar in terms of immersion and fun energetic gameplay. Although Battlefront 2 had ground and air based combat, they were separated into different game modes and so players could not enjoy them at the same time. Battlefront 3 was going to bridge these two together, as one minute you could be fighting on the ground, on the planet's surface, then commandeer a starfighter and take to the sky, dogfighting and destroying frigates. This truly would have been the most accurate and immersive Star Wars experience. Heroes, as I stated, were a huge selling point for Battlefront 2. Being able to play as some of the most iconic characters in the franchise really excited a lot of kids like myself. Bodying virgin rebels as Chad Vader made you feel like an untouchable god. Battlefront 3, again, would have included heroes, as we can see through the several leaked clips online. Looking at the scale and ambition present in this game, it is safe to assume that they would have included many new heroes not present in Battlefront 2, perhaps new Jedi and even other bounty hunters. The cancellation of Battlefront 3 hit a lot of fans hard, excluding the PSP games. The franchise was put on ice for a good few years, and for a while it seemed like we would never get another Battlefront title, leaving it to become another forgotten relic of the past. This seemed even more likely when Free Radical went bankrupt after their newest game, Haze, was a complete and utter failure after claiming to be the new Halo killer and ironically dying on arrival. With Free Radical out of the picture, who could possibly make the next Battlefront? Oh no. In 2013, we were greeted with a teaser for a new Battlefront being created by our friends EA. Yay. It was pretty quiet after that for about two years until we were shown another much longer trailer set on Endor. This one showed everyone the new appearances for the Rebels, Stormtroopers, and even a slick new Darth Vader model. Then we finally got a gameplay trailer on Hoth, and yeah, this was where things really started to look amazing. The sound design, the effects, the models, they were all so authentic and accurate that it made everyone feel like they were watching Empire Strikes Back again for the first time. EA made it clear that this game was going to solely focus on the original trilogy, which I was a little disappointed with, as the prequel era is my favourite of all the eras, but I still remained hopeful and couldn't wait to play it. Then the game launched, and after about two weeks of playing, I sat there and thought, Really? The game wasn't really a game at all, but rather a facade. A lie overhyped by the developers to cover up the fact that the game had no substance whatsoever. Six heroes at launch, and even less maps. This was one of the most disappointing games to ever hit shelves. For many fans, this was unforgivable, but some held hope that maybe EA would turn it around somehow, with some miracle. Then about a year and a half later, we were greeted with a new trailer for the upcoming sequel of that dogshit game, Star Wars Battlefront 2. And just like that, I and many other gullible people fell back into the trap of loving EA. The trailer showed off not only the new graphical leap, but the amount of new content that would be available in this game. This one even had a campaign, which the first game completely forgot to add. Once again, people were drawn to the flame, and once again, when the full game released, people got their fingers burned. Once again, a lack of substance left a lot to be desired. There's only so much you can enjoy of the pretty colours and the fantastic sound design before you realise that the game didn't have a lot to offer at launch. That I must stress, because post-launch, the game began to improve significantly, as we saw more heroes added, as well as maps and reinforcements. The campaign was also again massively disappointing and totally mismarketed. It was sold to the public as a game where you'd finally play as the bad guys, taking control of Iden Versio, an elite soldier devoted to the Empire. Well, at least she is for like the first five missions before doing a complete 180, going from a war criminal to becoming best buddies with the symbol of the rebellion in a matter of minutes, it feels like. Poor writing really screwed this one over, as this could have been interesting seeing the Imperial side of things all the way to the end without the predictable switch to the light side. It wasn't even that long, which just made it all feel rushed. And yeah, there was an expansion to that story, but that was pretty underwhelming too. No. Honey. Your dad is dead. What? We were wrong about Gleb. It was half- What the hell was that? This adds to the pain of never being able to play Battlefront 3, because these are the substitutes we got, unfortunately. Although now I do enjoy EA's Battlefront 2, it took years for it to reach this enjoyable and playable state. This is honestly, for me, EA's biggest mistake. Tarnishing the legacy Battlefront created all those years ago makes me wish I was in the timeline where Battlefront 3 did get finished.
I am still not over the fact that this game will never see the light of day, which clearly shows that there is no god when games like this, this, and this are greenlit. Battlefront 3 was just a victim of time and circumstance. Perhaps if given more time and if LucasArts had a little bit more faith in the product, then we would be playing the game even today. I know I would. I guess all we can do now is just grieve and try and move on, which will be impossible, even in 10 years time. There have been numerous apparent leaks that EA will continue their Battlefront franchise with their version of a Battlefront 3, but I guarantee now, if they do make that game, then it will not come anywhere close to the scale, ambition, and creativity that this unfinished gem had.